Welcome to Woggle Guides. In this guide, I'll explain how you can solve some of the problems with finding a good email address in Gmail. Let's get straight into it. I'm currently on the page you can use to create a Google account. You can find this at the link on screen, or you can go to the page directly by clicking on this link in the description below. When you sign up for a new Gmail account, it can be frustrating when you want to use your own name and avoid nicknames or hard to remember email addresses. If you have a very common name, it may be too late to choose a standard email format that uses first name and last name at gmail.com. In this guide, I'll explain some of the tips and tricks you can use to find a username that avoids lots of random characters or numbers in your email address. And stay with this guide to the end and I'll share with you an easy to follow checklist you can have for free to help you find the right email address for you. So what do we mean by a good email address? Well, at the simplest level, we should make sure that whatever email address we choose, it passes the phone test. That is, you must be confident that when you say your email address verbally, it can be understood, which really means we need to keep it easy to remember and pronounceable. Let's start with some quick rules for choosing an email address. Avoid an email address which is too long. This encourages typos and can be hard to remember if you're sharing it with someone. You should also avoid random letters, numbers or special characters. There are two exceptions to this when creating an email address in Gmail. You can use dots as Gmail ignores any dots you add to your email address. So Gmail sees the username john.smith as exactly the same email address as John Smith. Gmail also ignores capital letters, so John Smith in lowercase is exactly the same Gmail username as John Smith with capitals. Try to avoid adjectives in your email address, like cool, slick, or handsome. These might seem like a good idea, but they'll soon get old when you have to share your email address every day. Similar to this is the use of nicknames. These should be avoided as they may not be appropriate for some Gmail addresses or professional email addresses. One important tip to remember is to avoid adding information to your email address which may make it unique but which could compromise your online security such as your date of birth or telephone number or any government or tax ID numbers. And lastly, don't use any misspellings of your name. Not only does this not pass the telephone test, it can also cause confusion when you share your email address. So let's now turn to finding an email address for Catherine Smith. So we know that the ideal format is already unavailable. Let's start by trying the initials of a name rather than the full name. So instead of Catherine Smith, I'll try C Smith. And of course that's already taken. But what if I try using a middle initial instead of a first initial with a full first name? Catherine W Smith is taken. But what if I add a full middle name? So I'll try Catherine Wendy Smith and you can see that that is available. Don't forget, if none of these options work, try variations of the name with your initial for your first, middle and even last name and you may find one that works for you. Next, let's reverse the name order. So instead of first name followed by last name, let's try the last name first. That's likely to be taken if you have a common name. But you can see if I add a middle initial, then that's available. And don't forget to try the other variations we looked at earlier. You can also try abbreviations of your first and middle names. So instead of Catherine, I'll try Kath. Whilst this is taken, if I add an initial, that email address is available. You can also use prefixes to add uniqueness to your email address. These are words added before your name. So start your email address with Mr, Mrs, Ms, Miss, Doctor, etc. Whichever you think is appropriate. In this case I'll try Miss Kath Smith and you'll see that's available. You can also add your own personalized prefixes to your email address to give it some personality. So examples of this might include this is or the or I am at the start of the email. Remember not to add any apostrophes or hyphens to these prefixes as Gmail will not allow these characters. And building on that idea, you can of course also add suffixes. These are words after your name. A good example of this is any qualifications you might hold, 
such as a PhD or an MBA. Adding personalized words at the end of an email can also work well and make your email address appear very professional. Add words such as email, mail or official to the end of a standard email address to give it some standout. And this idea can of course be extended to your job role. So if you're an engineer or a designer, then why not shout about it in your email address? I hope you find this Wago guide useful and learned something new. If you have, please like or subscribe for free so that you can find out when new guides are available. Thanks for watching.